if you looked at an interdimensional nature of, say, something as simple as time travel that we can at least concept and we don't know if it's real or not. But he's like, if you time traveled back to Ford Theater in 1865, what's up, guys? If you're not... Hmm. It's very, it's, that's something I think about at night sometimes. Cause I, there's no, as far as we know, there's no precedent for that. There's yeah. no, it's like the deep sea. Yeah. For, yeah. And people worry, ocean. people worry so much about like, you know, the one world government and all that stuff. But does that have something to do with it? Are they trying to like get together so that eventually they could be together on that? Maybe. I don't know. I wish they'd find some better cast of characters to do it. <laughs> you know, people yeah. look quite suspect to say the least, but that's that's something that I don't think is talked about enough. That's yeah, that's interesting. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of learning lessons <laughs> colonizing space. Oh yeah. Like it's and maybe that's why a lot of people in the UFO community believe like some of them are some of these aliens are here to raise our our consciousness and like help humanity. Um, maybe part of that is just like not ha being territorial as you explore space. Well, and that would be the thing. Like if you're ta like hypothetically here, I don't know what to think of all that. If you're talking about one of two things, which I think would accomplish essentially the same goal, you either have aliens from a highly advanced, far advanced to us civilization from another planet who have figured out utopian interaction, or you have interdimensionality, in which case future humans are here where they figure that out then too in either of those scenarios that would make sense that they're trying to teach these these idiot you know lab rats us how to interact better but it gets weird because if you stay with the interdimensionality one for a second when i had dr michu kaku in here he, he talks about this a lot and like his theories on this i think are I might be a little biased, but I think they're very well thought out, and it's all hypothetical. We have to say that, but because he's a theoretical physicist. But, you know, like he always talks about if you looked at an interdimensional nature of, say, something as simple as time travel that we can at least concept, and we don't know if it's real or not, but he's like, if you time traveled back to Ford Theater in 1865 and made sure Abraham Lincoln didn't die, you're not changing the reality you're coming from. It creates a new river of time and a separate dimension, a world in which that action was different. That one thing was different in this world. So now, like, that's a serious event, right? Now think about, like, the butterfly effect with that, right? Yeah. Every little action, whether I tap the table right now or tapped it over there right now. There could be two different dimensions where that's the only difference that happened up to this point in time and everything after that's different, which yeah. means there's infinite dimensions in that way. So to land this plane here, what I'm saying is if you had some of these smarter beings coming back, I don't know how much incentive they would have to actually make sure we didn't destroy ourselves because they're coming from a different dimension anyway. It's like they might just be here with the popcorn to watch. Like, yo, this is the one where all these fucking idiots blow each other up with nukes. Hey, Jeff, get a load of this, right? Yeah. It could be something like that, you Some know? Rick and Morty. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think about that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like maybe... I, that's what I used to think that they're just here observing us like a like zoo animals, um, but honestly, I have no idea. Like I personally would love for it to be real. That way, I could meet one and hopefully meet the hot ones. Like I said, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, man, I, I don't know. I wish I wish that we had more information and more confirmation of certain things, or you know less of this like tribal mentality where I'm right, you're wrong. We're on different sides of the, the coin here, just creating drama between right. us, you know? Right. You know, there's a guy like right down the street here who claims he had sex with aliens. Really? Yeah, he lives here. It's like 95 now. Dang. What's that guy's name, Alessi? Can we look that up? I forget his name. Danny Jones wants to come up. He's wanted to do a podcast with him for years. Bro, I interviewed this girl named Stacy Wright, who's the head of the MUFON uh, in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know who she is? I, I'm well aware of MUFON okay. through Ron James. Got it. Podcast. Um, so she's in charge of like the Arizona MUFON. And I met her because I went to a MUFON meeting in Phoenix. Uh, is this the guy? What's his name? Sorry. Hit, hit more. 
Maybe the image. Ralph Blue. No, no, I, it, I, I don't. I don't think that's it. I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. Is, his, we, is this guy we, like an actual like high profile story? Yeah, yeah. We 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 cut you off though. Go ahead. You were talking about Stacy from Mufon. Yeah. Um, when I was I talking to her, like Mufon basically is what civilians report like their sightings or interactions with, and then they go out and independently investigate. Uh, but the that's oh, that's the dude. That's him. That's him. He wow. lives here. David Huggins. That's it. I'm sorry. And you've that's met him twice. We've cut you off now. No. I've not met him, but Danny has been trying just like, I guess, for the entertainment of it. Yeah. To do a podcast with him for years. And he was like, son of a bitch, bro. He lives like Lost five blocks from you. I mean, does it count if she wasn't human? He might still be a virgin. That's a good question. Like, wh who, what, is that his opening line with most of the chicks? Like, is that a thing that looms over him ever since? When I was 17, I lost my virginity to Would a Would you female. rather get AIDS your first time having sex or have lose your virginity to an alien? I mean, am I dying if I lose it to an alien? Or am I really sick if I lose it to an alien? Then I mean, if you talk to the guy in Virginia, Brazil. Well, yeah, but that well, he didn't have sex with him. This guy's fucking a fossil. He's like 100 years old. Does, it, does that make him a liar? Because if he had sex, wouldn't she have weird diseases that we don't know about? These are all valid questions, this is right? Valid question. <laughs> yeah, never thought about that. I guess I guess Daniel will have to ask him. The worst part is, what if she had some technology that made him turned on even if she was repulsive like a shallow how type of example you know what i'm saying <laughs> god i love podcasts like this. <laughs> so much fun we do so much serious shit in here sometimes it's like we got i mean have, there are human women who ones. i don't want to touch with a 10-foot pole now we're bringing in a whole other yeah. species bro yeah it gets weird it gets weird but now finally the stacy mufon thing yeah sorry so she said that people report having sex with these, you know, so that's why I brought it up because you actually brought up this guy. Yeah. And um, she, when I was like, really, that's a thing? Like her and her friend that she came with, they were like, you know how like when, so my, my fiance, she'll be reading like literotica and she'll like- Literotica? Like, you know, Erotic women are literature? into like those juicy, steamy novels. Like, like shades, Fifty Shades of Grey? Yeah, that type of shit. You know, my girl, my fiance, she said her favorite- she doesn't like me talking about her book, uh, books on no, podcasts. You're doing but, it now. Um, she, her favorite trope is enemies to lovers. But anyways, you know how like some girls, they'll like be into like literotica shit and they like, when they talk about it, they get all like excited and stuff. Like Stacy, yeah, yes. when, yeah, yeah. when she was like, yeah, people report having sex with it. And I was like, D what do they say? Is it like good or is it nasty? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, like her and her friend, they like got all like giddy, like school children. They're like, oh yeah, they say it was amazing. Oh, yeah, exactly, bro. That's what I'm saying. That was what I was basically like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Like jumping on the washing machine, like, oh yeah, it was wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently the reptilians got some big dick. Oh my God. Oh, can we go back to the pyramid? Jumping all over. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but we got off that with, because yeah. I got us off it talking about the locations of other places. But the thing I wanted to ask you about, and I'll get some of it wrong if I like try to repeat the entire theory, so I won't, but essentially Luke Cavern's argument, which he was, and I, I'm grateful for this, very open to being wrong about. He's like, Luke is very sober about this stuff, which I like. But he was trying to say that there is an argument that Khufu actually did build the pyramid or whatever. I know you disagree with that. But one of the things that admittedly, even for him, was like, a, yeah, this gets weird, is how the fuck they even got the stones there. Because the stone, I, I don't remember the weights and whatever, but maybe you know some of that offhand. Like, the stones are so big. And they had to get them from like a – maybe it was somewhere in the Nile and they had to move it. I don't remember how far, but very far. Is there any real physical explanation for how that could have happened? I know we've seen the one video with the guy who claims to be able to move stones. Yeah. We've shown it on the podcast, but I, I don't – that doesn't – that doesn't – also then affect like how they got him up high or moved him that fast across land to be able to build this within whatever it was, a hundred year period or something. Right. Well, it's actually 20 years is what it took supposedly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's why I'm trying not to do numbers because I'll get it wrong. So, so yeah, you, you're correct. The, the, basically the stones were taken from two different places, like quarried, I think is what the term yes. is, right? Yes. Quarried from two different places. And one of the places, um, 
was where the larger stones that make up the intricate interior come from. So the stones go from two tons basically at the low end all the way up to 80 tons. And the larger ones are kind of what make up the intricate interior and yeah. the tunnels and whatnot. And so those larger 80 ton ones were the ones that were quarried from 500 miles south of Giza. Now people look at that and they go, well, clearly the Nile River is there. Clearly they use the Nile River to transport these 80 ton stones. But when you look at the boats that yeah. supposedly, and I'll just bring it back to Mahomes. Mahomes, the greatest quarterback ever. <laughs> Even his trainer said <laughs> after his dad bod pictures come out, came out, you can't launch a cannon out of a canoe. Well, that's a good quote. Right? That's a good quote. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.